size so it's plus size luxury and I just wanted to pull over and do a short intro. Today I was able to stop by Diptyque here in Atlanta. It's at the shops at Buckhead and it's just a collection of high-end stores similar to the design district I believe in uh, Miami. Uh, they have like Hermes and Dior. Anyways, I was able to go to this event where we were able to uh, preview their holiday line, which I believe launches around the 12th or the 13th here in the United States. Um, they had like a little VIP event with like champagne, so you'll be able to see the clips from that event. I thought it was really cute. I was also able to snag the advent calendar super early, so I'm super excited to show you. Uh, so I'm going to jump into clips of the event and then I'll get behind the camera and unbox the advent calendar together so we can see what's inside. Uh, just FYI, in case you're not following me on Instagram, I did unbox these sunglasses from Veragamo, I think like a week ago. Um, so if you're not following me, please do. I'm at Plus Size Luxury there as well. Anyways, I really think these are super fun. They're actually a dark green, so it's a bit different, but still very subtle, and I think I need another color. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because I know I haven't uh, shared it on the channel yet. Uh, so let's jump right into the clips of the event, and then we'll go into the unboxing. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey guys, so I just wanted to show you my order from Diptyque. I'm super excited. I was able to attend a VIP event where, um, oh, they gave me a little gift where I was able to order the advent calendar about a week early. Let's see what's in this. So it's just a little I think gift bag they gave us, drawstring, nice quality bag. All right, so this looks like it's a candle. Oh, it is, okay. Let me get a sniff. Mmm, this smells really good. Okay, so this is Trente Corte. I do not know how to pronounce this, but here is the name of it, in case you're wondering. Mm, it smells like a really good like men's fragrance. That is so nice. Okay, so I have that. And then they also gave us those. Let's see what this is. Okay, so this is the cover right here. This is the back of it. I think it's just a notebook. Let's see. It is, okay. So how cute. They just gave me a little notebook and these were my free gifts. Let me put these to the side. Let's go about, this bag was so heavy by the way. So this is what's inside. Let me try to slide this out. Seems to be... Alright, which side is the top? 
Okay, so there's like a little ribbon pull tab. All right, so that's it there. All right, just some warnings. So we have some here. Ah, okay, so you open it this way. This is the advent calendar. I think it goes from one to 25. So it goes from one to 25. And I really love the design this year. It's like textured. And these seem to be like pull drawers. Although now that I'm looking at it, it seems like they would collapse upon themselves, you know, cause there's no, there's no like shelving. So that's interesting. This looks like it's going to fall over. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully this table is wide enough um, so that I can show you everything, but let's see how this goes. Leave right here. So yeah, this is day number one. Here's the design. This seems like it's a candle. Mm, okay, so this is not open us. I think this is like a uh, foie de bois. Okay, so the description says winter time. In the hearth, a fire roars, throwing out its light, casting out its shadows. The wood crackles as a flame slowly consumes the logs, releasing their dense, smoky scent. It smells definitely like a wood burning fire. It's really nice. Okay, so let's put that back there. Okay, so this is number two. I love the design of these. It's really cute. A perfume. And this is a rose right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's give it a whiff. Such a beautiful rose scent. Let's see if I can find the description. So the description for this one says, a different take on the rose, an eau de perfume uh, rose reveals a completely new dimension of the flower. More faceted, more exuberant in this composition extracts an absolute of damascena and centifolia roses amplify the flower's intensity. Ferret rose essence is added to this duo with its astonishingly fruity accents of lychee, or is it lychee, and its unexpected yet naturally present notes. The honeyed scents of chamomile, the singular green vegetal, a quart of artichoke. After all, the perfumers say, a good rose always smells of artichoke. Okay, I didn't know that. So this is day three. Looks like it's another candle. And this is what we can see right here. I love that it has, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it has its own like felt so that the candle won't shift around. Yeah, you can't see that. It's really dark, but <laughs> you get what I mean. Okay, so, so I think this is like figure. I know this is like a fig scent, if I remember correctly. Mmm, it smells like figs. Let's get the description for this one. The woody scent of fig trees stretching endlessly across the Mediterranean landscape. The sun is at its peak and the warm wind carries with its intense fragrance of the trees mingled with the green, delicately fruity accents of a handful of figs on the cusp of ripening. How lovely. It smells really, really good. So this is four. Love the design of this. So fun. Ooh. This is like a deep blue candle. Neige, maybe that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> These are all guesses, but I love how deep blue it is. It's beautiful. Mmm. I can't really describe that. I can't really describe that scent. Let's look for the description. So Neige, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, it seems to be a limited edition holiday scent. Letters flecked with gold dance on the Maison's emblematic oval, 
turn out the lights and watch as the starry phosphorescent <laughs> design glows in the night as if by magic. The neige slash snow candle diffuses a soft harmony of helotrope and white musk in a cosmic shimmer. Poetryly, po poetically inspired by diptyque, the powdery delicacy of snow enhances or enchants your winter nights, an unforgettable olfactory experience to light up your winter. Oh. Here is five. It's another blue box. Just love how these are decorated. So let's take out this. And it seems like we have a little box inside. What is this? Perfumed soap. I just love their packaging. It's so pretty. Okay. So it says perfumed soap. Oh, wow. It's just the naked soap. <laughs> okay. So this is the soap right here. It just has stamped Diptyque Paris. Mmm. It smells very, very good, but I'm going to keep it in its packaging. It's already starting to melt in my hand. Doesn't really say what... Oh, Dosan. So this is the scent, Dosan. All right, so Dasan, as a child, Eve Consolant, one of Diptyque's founders, which I probably butchered his name, I'm sorry, spent his summers in Dasan in Ha Long Bay. The sea breeze carried the heady and spicy scent of tuberoses. Dasan had the delicateness and persistence of a memory from a childhood in Indonesia, the memory of a flower between lightness and delight. How beautiful. So this is the box for six. So perfume, as I said, everything seems to come with like custom little cutouts so they don't shift, which I really like. So this one is Tam Diao, I believe. Eau de Perfume. All right, here is the bottle. It's beautiful. Let me take a whiff of this. Oh my goodness. It's like a very woody scent. Mm, mm, mm. This is so, so good. I love it. This is definitely my favorite, favorite scent so far. Let's see what the description is. Okay, so for this one, a memory of the holy forest in Indochina, the velvety milky scent of sandalwood buried or burned in temples. Eve's Consulant, which again, I might be pronounced, mispronouncing. <laughs> One of Diptyque's founders has never forgotten this fragrance from his childhood, illustrated by the stately sandalwood from Mysore. Beautiful. I just love, love, love the scent. It's like woody, earthy, but intriguing in some way. Here is seven. Here's the box. Another beautiful box. Let's see. Canel. Is that what that is? I believe so. So Canel. <laughs> Let's give this a sniff. Mmm. Like citrus, like orange peel. I mean something spicy. Okay. So what is the description for this? Cinnamon bark freshly stripped from the tree branches. It has kept its captivating sense of its land of origin, India, and its ac accents at times woody, spicy, at others warm and gourmand. One of the first three diptyque candles. Oh, wow. That's really cool. It is really nice. Mm. I'm surprised I don't, there's no citrus in the description, but maybe I'm just smelling it wrong. You know what I just noticed? I feel like this sort of has a constellation type feel because I see that a lot of the boxes have different astrological signs. So that's really neat. I just realized that. All right, so now we need number eight.
from one of these on the side that you can't see. So this is number eight box. So noise set tier. Let's give this a sniff. Ooh, almost smells like candy or melon or something. Ooh, I love that one. I love all of them. <laughs> Let me put the box back and then we can look at the description. The hazelnut tree at the heart of the forest, the fruit still on the tree, its hazelnut shells nestled in their pericarp. I wonder what that word is. Its fragrance has retained the freshness of green leaves and the delicately crunchy praline notes of hazelnut on the cusp of ripening. The descriptions are the best. <laughs> So now we need number nine, which is up here. So this is box number nine. And we have a fragrance here. Okay, so this is Orpheon. You can see that or beyond. Let's give it a whiff. It's like aquatic yet masculine. Very, very good. I love it. So the Orpheon description, very long. Okay. All right, so Paris in the early 60s, the St. Germain Quarter was alive with the rhythm of all-night sessions in jazz clubs and artistic encounters. People would discuss the world, dance, and laugh in a warm atmosphere as vibrant as it was elegant. Orpheon was one of the bars filled with joyful effervescence where the three founders of the nearby Diptyque Boutique liked to meet. Today, paying tribute to this era, to create friendship, the bar is immortalized in the olfactory portrait that bears its name, Orpheon. Freeze frame, curls of tobacco smoke, mingled with powdery trails of blusher, lingering on burnished wood. At the heart of the composition is the atmosphere of that unforgettable place, recognizable through warmth of the tonka bean and the depth of cedar and the vivacity of juniper berries. Beautiful. All right, so number 10. So over here, oh, okay. So these are the ornaments. I'm gonna put these back actually, but you get to sort of unfurl these so that they become a sphere and then you hang them on your tree. It comes with instructions on how you're supposed to use them. See, like you're supposed to twist them so they become an orb. Really cute, I love these. Let me put these back in the box. Here's the 11 box. Ooh, this one got a little loose. This is another perfume, a lot of perfume. Let's see what we got here. We got Fleur de Peau, like pear almost. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let's give it a sniff. Ooh, it's like a fresh pear or apple scent that I'm getting from it. Very, very floral as well. Let us look at the notes. Wow, so this actually won two awards, Perfume Extraordinaire and Best New Woman's Fragrance. Um, so the description says, a tribute to the mythical love between Psyche and Eros, which led to the birth of their daughter, Hiron. One scent can convey this legend, musks. At the heart of Fleur de Pleur, they are cottony, soft, or moist. Heightened with the iris and ambergate seed, or ambrette seed, they reveal their full tactile dimensions. Beautiful. Here is 12. All right, so here is the 12th box. Oh, 
So this is one of their solid perfumes. Wow, look at the design. I actually have mine from last year. I've never used it. So I do need to use it this year. It's just, it's very weighty. Like you can use this as a paperweight almost. Has a magnetic closure. That's a very satisfying like snap. <laughs> and then this is the solid perfume inside. Hmm, which one is this? Ah, here is the name on the back. What is that? Philoxcos? <laughs> okay, so it lasts 20 months. So if I have mine from last year, I think I still have another year with it. But here it is. I just love, love, love the design. Okay, so the description for this is the memory of a Greek summer at Mount Pelion, where to get to the sea there was a natural grove of wild, sun-soaked fig trees to cross. Filiokos is an ode to the entire fig tree, the green freshness of the leaves, the milky flavor of the figs, and the density of the white wood. So here's 13. Candle roses, very, very famous. Although look, oh no, looks like some of the candle dripped out when they were pouring it, but that's fine. Mmm, so, so good. I believe we already had a rose scent earlier, so I'm not going to reread the description, but again, here it is. It just smells like a fresh cut rose with none of the like grandma cottony like smell that some other rose fragrance have. Mm. Oh, actually, we don't have one out, so let me just read the description right quick for you. So, rose bushes brimming with flowers one day in May. Some are just opening, others are in full bloom, their petals beaded with dew. The fragrance fills the air with fresh floral notes. Mm. Okay, so now we need 14, which is up here. Oh, that almost fell out. <laughs> so here we go. Another fragrance. So we have A Capital, which is really, really nice. Let's give it a spritz. Ooh, what is that? It just smells like a like a very, like it's a mature woman, but not like old. Just like she has her own car, her own house. Like, <laughs> I'm just getting like boss lady from this for some reason, but it's a very, it's like a musky floral aquatic scent I'm feeling. For Diptyque, the only chipray, a lively fragrance with its roots deep in one of the first and most famous perfumeries in the world can fully embody the essence of the city with a thousand faces. An excess of lush roses precedes the freshness of bergamot notes accented by bright pink berries. Its undertone is patchouli, bringing together a fragrance at once defiant and free. That's so funny, it says defiant. Like, it does feel like, you know, bossy, you know? <laughs> okay, so let's put that down. All right, where was I? I think I am at 15. All right, so 15 is right here. Looks like it's another candle. Ooh. So I looked it up. This is one of the limited edition scents. I think it's supposed to be, what is this? Eh, tin cells? So <laughs> let's see what the description is. So the eh, tin cells slash spark candle instantly brings the spirit of the holiday season to life. It envelops the end of the year in a comforting scent that blends well with, um, that blends the smell of wood fire with delicious notes of coffee and chocolate, an unforgettable olfactory experience to light up the winter. Hmm. Um, I don't know if I'm getting coffee, but I definitely feel like there's like strong chocolate 
and wood burning like it reminds me of this one but with a chocolate note so like wood fire and chocolate that is so pretty i just love the label you know it's funny they even took the time to sort of match the box with the color of the candle all right so 16 it's over here there's box number 16. Oh, so sort of like a yellowish candle. Wow, that is just a very, very nice rose scent, but different from roses somehow. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. The scent of tuberose in the wild field of southern India where the fragrant white flowers are grown. From the top of their long slender stems, they exhale a heady yet fresh and green scent, delicately nuanced with fruity, milky, or sorry, milky notes. So, 17. Oh, fragrance in a white box for some reason. The rest of them have been black. Oh, okay, so the black ones are out of perfume and the white ones is out of toilette. Odessons, I believe. I don't know if you could see that. Odessons. Let's give it a sniff. Mmm. It's like spicy, woody, very green almost. Let's look at the description. A composition that creates confusion. It caresses the skin and makes your mouth water like an indulgent treat, awakening you to its freshness. Ah Descends owes its originality to the very idea behind its creation, bringing together all the dimensions of a bitter orange tree, its branches, leaves, and fruit. Ah, oh, interesting. It just smells very, very floral to me. It does say that it is in the floral family. Okay, so that makes sense. All right, so now we need 18. 18 is in the corner here. So here it is. Another candle. So many candles. I am here for it. Okay, so this is Bayes. I think this is like one of their most, hmm famous scents. Let's get a description. I just get a lot of like fruit and flowers. The tangy coolness of freshly picked black currant berries, a few black bunches still have their leaves, their green and aromatic scent blending with the lively flowery accents of rose. 19 is down here. Looks like it's another eau de toilette. with the one that I still can't pronounce. <laughs> but we've already had this before, so I'm not gonna read the description, but I am gonna take a little whiff of it. Since I'm out of paper space. Hmm, it smells very vegetal and fresh on my skin. It's very, very good. Even though when you think vegetal, you're like, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily sound good. It does smell very good on the skin. 20 is up here. So this is 20. Let's see another candle. Mimosa. I'm guessing this is going to be orange. Mmm. Oh, it must mean the flower, not the drink. <laughs> okay. Because it's very, it's like a fresh laundry flower scent. Let's look up the description. In February in the south of France on the Tanneron Hills near Grasse, or Grasse, the mimosas are in bloom. Their sunny golden yellow color stretches as far as the eye can see. 
and their small velvety blossoms scent the air with velvety, delicately honeyed notes. Okay. Smells really good. All right, we're at to the last five now. So now we need 21, which is over here. Another candle. The. Interesting. Ooh, smells like a library. Hmm. I don't know how to describe it other than it's very warm and comforting smelling. Strong, smoky, black tea leaves from distant climes. Having crossed the seas, they have absorbed with time and travel the scent of spices and other treasures brought back from around the globe. Cumin, coriander, pepper, one of the first three diptyque candles. Wow. Mmm, it just smells really comforting, but I guess that makes sense. I am a tea drinker, so... <laughs> another fragrance on the toilet. Uh, this is a Dosan. We've already read the description for this. It's beautiful. Put that back here. Now we need 23. 23. Okay. Another candle. This is amber. Mmm. Smells just like its name, just like an amber golden scent. A warm and elegant procession of woods, vetiver patchouli, and hand with the radiant aniseed, insolent spices, mysterious incense, citrus, and tonka bean. Hmm. Okay. Twenty-four. So we're almost done here. So twenty-four is right here. A candle. Oh no, okay, not a candle. Looks like this is some sort of body butter. What is this? Ah, a body balm. This is a very creamy one. Mmm. This is Fleur de Pleur. So that really pear scented one, I believe. Lovely. Okay, so now we're going to open up the big one for 25. So this is a much bigger box. All right. Ooh. Oh, okay. So here is the design. I just love the simplicity of it. It's just gorgeous. Okay, so I think this is Sapin, Sapin. And if I remember correctly, this is sort of like a Christmas tree scent, like pine woodsy. It smells really good. The Sapin pine tree candle expresses notes of mountain pine on a cold winter's night, a woody accord emblematic of the holidays it is warmed by an unexpected accents of mimosa, a winter flower with tones as sweet and honeyed as stardust. Aw, okay. Yes, it smells like a Christmas tree. Hmm. Okay. All right, so that was everything. Let me just give you sort of a close up. So these are the items that come inside the advent calendar. I think it's totally worth the money. It retailed for, I believe, $480, which is a bit of an increase from last year. I think last year was $420, but 
I think there's more candles this time, so maybe that's why. I highly recommend this advent calendar. Let me know if you have any questions. I only buy about one or two advent calendars a year, so I don't think I'm going to get any more, but this one is a must buy for me. Anyways, if you like this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!